Okay, so a while back, I accepted an offer for a dream job. And now, when I say a dream job, I mean that this job allowed me to check off almost every single box on my professional wish list. I'm guessing a lot of you here have one of those. I mean, it was a great company, awesome bosses, bright colleagues, interesting work, the pay was good, the title was flattering, and I even got to travel a little bit. And considering this was my first real job, I was really over the moon when I got the offer. I felt proud and I felt excited. And I also felt validated by the fact that I had been the one chosen for this opportunity. I was so excited to get in and get started and make my mark on the company. And I ended up lasting all of four months. Um, a little while in, I got the sense that things weren't going to go quite like I thought they were going to. I was struggling under the weight of my work. I was having a really hard time getting and staying motivated, and I was generally unable to focus. I was also having a really hard time sleeping. I was crying a lot, and I was just kind of feeling lost and vulnerable. Um, you know, I wasn't quite sure what the solution to this unhappiness was, but I had a gut feeling that staying was probably never going to be the answer. So after a lot of soul searching and a holiday weekend at home with family where I did nothing but work, I made the decision that it was time to quit. And at that time, I didn't know quite what I was going to do next, but I just knew it was time to keep moving. And around that period, I was also struggling with some grief from my mother's death just over a year before that had really started bubbling up and calling for my attention in a way that it never had before. So I thought, hey, this is as good a time as any to take a little bit of a break. And around then, I remember talking to a very dear friend of mine who had also lost a parent a few years before. And she warned me in a very gentle way that when I slowed down, all the grief that I had been ignoring was probably going to catch up with me and that it might just knock me over sideways. And I vividly remember telling her in not so many words that that wasn't going to happen to me. <laughs> That's what happened to other people, to weaker people, and that I was strong and I was successful and thank you for your concern, but I'm going to be fine. I was wrong. And that spring, I learned that when life wants to teach you a lesson that you've been ignoring for a really long time, it's going to really drive that message home just to make sure that you get it. And that lesson for me was that when you lose a parent, grieving is actually a really big deal. And if you do wait too long to do it, it's going to come and it's going to bite you in the ass. And that spring and summer, I went through a brief period of depression. And the way I describe it, it was like someone had kind of turned the brightness dial down on life. And I felt like I was running through water and the rest of the world was just kind of moving on ahead of me at full pace and I couldn't keep up. I found myself sleeping in every day, and I really only had the mental and physical strength to work part time. And it was then that I realized that it was probably time to intentionally slow down for a little while. And that just completely horrified me. I mean, I thought sleeping in was for lazy people, and that I thought slowing down somehow made me less than, and that time off was just for people that didn't have ambition. Um, you know, it sounds, well, it sounds kind of dramatic, but it was a bit of an identity crisis for me. I mean, to give you some context, my mom passed away during my last year of university, which is a really crucial time in an overachiever's life. And at that time, I only took a week off from school and two weeks off from work because I was so afraid that if I took any longer to recover that everyone was going to start passing me by and that I was going to fall behind the pack. I mean, I remember feeling so resentful that life was slowing me down. Because I had plans and I had goals and I wasn't going to get life get in the way. But there I was that summer. I was sleeping in daily and I could only work part time. And the hours that I would normally have spent on side hustles and volunteer gigs, I was doing yoga and I was meditating and I was reading a self-help book which I thought I would never, ever do. I mean, by my standards, I was slacking off. And the way I saw it, slacking off was the complete antithesis of success because it could never possibly lead to happiness. But I was really, really happy. And I was healthy. And I had better relationships. 
And when I did my work, it was better because I was more focused. I mean, I was the picture of failure by my earlier standards, but I was thriving in a way that I had never before experienced. I wondered to myself, how could it have taken so long in one really unfortunate circumstance for me to realize that this was a legitimate and wonderful way to want to live my life? You know, that summer and the fall that followed, I got to thinking a lot about the unwritten rules about personal worth and achievement that govern the decisions we make and ultimately how we choose to live our lives. Because how could something that I had for so long been taught to equate with failure bring me so much joy and personal success? And I wondered, how many other people, should they have a similar life experience, would come to the same kinds of conclusions and make a dramatic shift in their lives? And day after day and week after week, I kept coming back to one question. What would my life look like if I actually allowed myself to live by my definition of success? Like success is this crazy, huge, nebulous thing that we're all trying desperately to move towards in every single aspect of our lives. Our health, our romantic relationships, our professional lives. We all want it, but do we really know what it means to us. It gets crazy and kind of scary to think about the volume and the importance of the life decisions that we make based around this pursuit of success when so few of us can actually articulate a definition of the word, let alone answer the question, what would your life look like if you were living by your own definition of success? I think it's a question that we all need to have an answer for. But it's so big that we really need to break it down in order to be able to first get an answer, but then to get valuable information from that answer that we can use to make real change in our lives. And to do that, there's three questions that I like to ask. So the first, what makes you feel successful? What moments and what experiences really made you feel like you could call yourself a success? Was it when you closed a big account? Was it when you gave to charity? Was it when you sold something that you had built with your own hands? Or maybe it was just getting eight solid hours of sleep in one night. And when you identify those moments and experiences, I want you to think critically about what exactly it was about them that made you feel successful. Was it the sense of belonging and community that it gave you? Was it the opportunity to show kindness to others? Was it the recognition? Or was it the sense of financial independence? Over time, you're going to start to see a common, characteristic, common characteristics emerge that connect all of these moments and experiences. And that's something I refer to as your golden thread. And at the end of your analysis, you might very well come to find that this looks nothing like the kind of success that you've been taught to want and pursue since you were born. And that can be a scary thing, which leads me to my next question. What's holding you back? What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of being misunderstood, of running out of money, of losing the investment that you made in your education? Maybe you're afraid of yourself, of what you're capable of doing. Or maybe, and I think this might be the scariest one of all, you're afraid that if you really sit down and think about it, you'll realize that the life that you've built for yourself has nothing to do with your own definition of success. Regardless of what those fears are, when you name them, I want you to frame them with this question. What is a scarier outcome? That what you fear becomes reality? Or spending your life chasing achievements and accomplishments that don't really mean anything to you? And so the last question I want you to do, a bit of visualization. On a very real and practical level, what would your life look like if you were living by your definition of success. I mean, like what would you eat? Where would you live? Who would you spend your time with? What would you do for health and fitness? What would you work on? How many hours would you work? Living by your definition of success can seem like this crazy and outlandish and kind of really impossible outcome until we get a sense on a very real and concrete level of what our day-to-day -day life might look like if we lived our lives that way. Once we have this broader vision, we can work, work backwards to intentionally architect a life based around our own definition of success. 
And I want to leave you with one last thought. Know that you are allowed to want this. That it's okay to want to live your life on your own terms. You know, it's sometimes it's our own inability to give ourselves permission to break the rules that prevents us from living a life of our own creation. You know, and when you undertake this journey, you really need to be unapologetic and unwavering about it because it is hands down one of the most difficult journeys you can take in your life, but it's also one of the most rewarding. I mean, going against what you've been taught since you were little is hard. And bearing your soul to the world in a way that this type of life calls you to do is scary. Like, I'm terrified sometimes. And when you break the mold and go against the grain, you're going to make some people uncomfortable. And you might even scare them. And guess what? Those people might be some of the people that you hold dearest. Your family, your friends, your coworkers. But you need to be unapologetic and unwavering in your pursuit of what works for you. Because no matter how long your life ends up being, it is most certainly too short to spend it playing by someone else's rules. <laughs>